are now equipped with driver assist features like pedestrian detection or emergency auto braking. Auto manufacturers say these new features help prevent crashes that could injure pedestrians, but a AAA study shows new technology still has a long way to go. WCPO transportation reporter Pat LaFleur has a closer look now at how well it performs when trying to protect some of our most vulnerable road users. Something's got to give. That's lifelong Cincinnati resident and Westwood mom and stepmom of 10, Jennifer Hansel. Three of my kids go to Dater and one goes to West High. She's one of a number of Dater and West High parents who over the last year have started meeting to discuss the safety of their kids on their way to school. More than a year ago, two drivers ran down 15-year-old West High sophomore Gabrielle Rodriguez as she was catching her Metro bus to school. Hansel suffered her own tragedy this summer when her stepson was fatally shot while attending a get ready for school event near their home. Now Hansel thinks about little else beyond making sure her kids can get to and from school safely. She said Rodriguez's death struck a chord with her and her family. Oh man, it crushed my heart just because it was a child leaving home, going to school. One look at her street and you can see why she's concerned when her kids are walking to catch their bus in the dark. They don't have enough lights out there for people to watch for kids. Kids walking in the dark make up the most vulnerable population of road users. According to AAA's study, 89% of scenarios simulating a child darting into the street, the sensors and technology failed to prevent a collision. And the sensors failed to prevent a collision every time in dark conditions. My main thing is don't rely on it. Wes Crowd is known around Walnut Hills as the guy who bikes his two young daughters to school each day equipped with blinking lights and hauling a bright yellow reflective trailer, often before the sun comes up. His experience getting his kids to school safely before sunrise, he said, was part of his decision to purchase a vehicle with pedestrian detection and auto braking. The auto braking technology is really what we cared about with that. In the few scenarios that we've had, it's actually worked very well for us. But he also warns. It is a tool that might help you in certain scenarios, but it's not something that you should rely on, or at least not yet. UC Professor Jaishi Ma heads up the university's Advanced Transportation Cooperative, which devotes much of its time testing automated vehicle technology. The AAA report you, uh, we were talking about uh, kind of gives the results that we also expected. Ma is concerned consumers might not understand that the technology on the market now is not meant to simply take the wheel when the driver cannot. He also said the sensors being used primarily today weren't designed to work in the dark. These driver systems are not really, uh, uh, you're not supposed to just let it do by itself. The drivers still take the responsibility of perceive and to, to take actions. Driver's manuals indicate that this technology will only be reliable in certain conditions. But in the meantime, Hansel said she still worries about her kids just walking down the street to catch the bus to Dater and West High. We shouldn't have to make our kids wear the yellow jackets, the neon jackets, but that's what it's coming down to. From Westwood, Pat LaFleur, 9 on your side. Now, Pat has been following the rates of pedestrians struck across the tri-state over the past three years. And you can find a link to the recent AAA study and all of Pat's reporting on pedestrian safety and transportation over on WCPO.com.